Right, welcome to the second podcast for Sports Business Mentorship. Today, I speak to Paul Bignett. Paul was one of my first students to start working with me. I found him through a cold organic outreach on LinkedIn. We started chatting and started understanding what his business was all about. Um, we got on a call and we quickly understood that uh, we can work, each other, work, work with each other. We were a great fit. I saw that he was a smart guy just towards the tail end of his football career and needed all the help he can get. So, and he's played in uh, almost every level of English football. I actually will allow him to tell you more about his playing experience, uh, but I'm really glad and excited to have uh, uh, Paul on this uh, podcast with me. Welcome, Paul, to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Right, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and your playing background and how you actually got started with your business. Okay then, so since I left school, I joined the Crew Alexandra Academy. So I was there from 13 all the way to 21, so through the academy into the first team. Um, so basically, in England, I've played in the championship League One, League Two, National League, National League, North and South. And I've had a little time over in Iceland's top level. So football-wise, I've experienced it all, the highs, the lows. So it's been a good journey. Um, along that way, obviously in the back of my head, I'm getting towards the end of my career age-wise. So you do have to start thinking about what you're going to do after football and it's all it's already it's always been in the back of my head but it comes around quick I remember the older pros saying to me get planned early like when I was 21 22 and you're thinking I've got years to go and then before you know it you're at that point so I started Big My Sports Edit where basically we showcase uplift motivate players globally through videos so I have agents managers players mainly coming for me to basically using their footage, whether it, they've had a great season and they want it for keepsake or whether they want it to help them get a move. So um, they're using me for various reasons. So basically I started doing that. It built up, built up, but I got to a stage. Obviously I've got no business background, so I took it to a certain level. Obviously then me and you came in contact and then you helped me take it to the next level. Good. And let's deep dive a little bit into the actual idea of starting a, a, a sports production company because you could have started anything on earth and you decided to plunge in and get started with a sports production company. Where did the motivation come from? So I've always, in the back of my head, I've all, I want the end goal is to have my own business. That was back then a good five, six years ago. So I was what am I passionate about? What am I involved in? What am I good at? So obviously I've been around football my whole life, so that's a good starting point. Um, when I was at Crew, from an early age, they encouraged us to get in the um, analyst room and to edit all your footage. So I took that with me my whole career. So then I got better and better. I, every club I've been at, I always work closely with the analyst team. Um, so I picked up a lot of tips. So then I started doing it for myself and then a teammate seen mine and he was like, oh, would you do one for me? And then someone else seen that and it spread and it spread. And I was like, one, I'm good at doing it. Could I, how could I turn this into a business? Could I start? So it started from that. Okay. And uh, how hard was it to get started? Because a lot of uh, athletes, uh, people that want to get into business, especially when they talk to me, uh, one of the things that I come across all the time is that I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start. I'm scared to start. So these were all the things that actually propped up when I had hundreds of conversations. And what prompted you? Because the listeners to this will be looking at from at your point of view because you're so early in your journey. Uh, how did you actually start and how scary was it for you? Or was it at all? It's a bit of both because obviously you're, you're entering the unknown. So you're always going to have a bit of that scarcity. But at the same time, I'm excited by the unknown. So that I was more driven by the excitement. So I didn't really turn it into a business until I knew you and knew how to. Because if I'm honest, I didn't know how to. So at the start, it was more of a 
Harbe, and I, I took that approach. But then when I knew I needed to go on to the next level, it all happened. Well, you got in touch at me at a good time. I was obviously the I was at Truro at the time, and I was considering life after football. You got in touch, told me your background, and basically, as you said, we matched. And I knew you could help me. And then to, to start the business, the things like the accountants registering it as a business, all them little details, you can find. But if you haven't done it, I didn't have a clue. But once you explained, took me through the process, I still had to do it, and it made things a lot clearer. So I registered the business as a limited company, got all the bank account, everything in place, and then I went to work, and then it started from that. That was the base. Then we looked at the marketing, and then it's gone from step to step with improvements. Let's go back in in time when you first started again. Um, I know when we first met, you were doing this for like twenty pounds, thirty pounds, or or fifty pounds a pop, and then we completely shifted yeah. the mindset. Um, tell me a little bit more or explain why was that big mental mental shift really important in business for you? Well, it was massive. Like, as you said, I was charging fifty pound. Just because at that time I was just doing it as to help a mate out. It did take loads of time, but at the same time I knew I was getting good at it. So and I, in the back of my head, I did I had a vision. Obviously, I was going to turn it into a business. Then after speaking to you, you were like, you went through what I did, the process, it, how long it took me, and you were like, you were underselling yourself massively. Um, you was like, we need to restructure it, get packages. You, got, you were like, you've got a great idea, but it's not sustainable. So to make that work, we've got to repackage it. It goes your prices. You told me you was like, um, you're selling far too cheap. You're underselling yourself. And that the, when you first said it, it was hard for me to take in. I was like, no one's going to buy my work for the prices we were mentioning in. And then, but when I actually broke it down and the process, what I'm putting into it, I'd, I was massively underselling myself, so your packages didn't make sense, and straight away I seen the effect. Yeah, I think one of the big shifts that you made was also uh, the self awareness. One thing that I, I really found that, um, like I said in the beginning of the conversation here, that you're a smart guy, you understood what it takes to uh, quickly get to where you wanted to get to. Um, but the work that we usually do is the first week of working with me, it's all about the mindset. How did that really affect? your business uh, but more so your personal life and how what you got out of life after that i'd say it's probably the key is key because if you are if you're not right mentally and knowing how you're going to approach things or you're unsure you're going to take that into whatever you're doing so just for example with my packages if i wasn't sure about the price and i'm approaching you as a customer and i'm trying to sell you my product you won't know, but you'll be giving off that impression. But once I understood what I'm offering, how much detail I'm putting in, I was confident I'm doing a great job and they're getting a good price. So it was just a total different approach. And then, so it is a shift. So you have to keep, it's like anything to improve, you just got to keep repetition, repetition. So every day, morning, noon and night, I was mentally working on the stuff you provided. And I'd say, yeah, it had a massive effect, but not only with just my business and all areas. So obviously, I had my football side of things, your home life, it applies to everything. So in that sense, it was great. So let's go back uh, again where in terms of uh, revenues, right? So before working with me, you sort of had some sort of revenue and now you're at a point where uh, obviously the revenue has grown, but not to the level where both you and I I would say it's a, it's a complete success, but the, the steps are in place. But how do you see yourself in the next 12 months if you keep the same trajectory? Yeah, so as you, we haven't reached the target. Obviously, we've set high targets. We haven't, obviously, we're not there yet. But from, I've, I've got a clear track on my last three years. And then since working with you, I've com comfortably trebled what I was doing. So if you look at that growth, obviously, you can't complain about that. But I know how I've done it, where, why, what I was doing, what's made that work, what didn't make that work. So I've got a clear blueprint 
that's going to help me sustain that level, which I don't want to do, but I know how to grow it again. So it's going to help me know how to just basically keep growing it, keep growing it. So that's the end goal. Great. And, and then, go on. I got you just cut off there. Yeah. No, so I was, I was going to ask you, I, I, I know that when, when, when the early stage, when we're starting to work with, with each other, that someone will, will, will contact you and say, Paul, can you do this for 75 uh, pounds or give me a discount or what happened to the, the, the last rate? And you were almost in two minds. You were unsure, like saying, oh, maybe should I do it because I'm going to lose customers? But I really, I quickly realized that over time, you, your mindset completely changed. Today, you won't get out of bed for less than 200 pounds. So what was that shift that, that really gave you the belief to say that, hey, my products are of, of, of some value? Yeah, it's about it's understanding. So obviously, I've done my research on all the people providing highlights. So I know how to put it together, what works. I know what's been an easy job, but, but that, that's where I'm different. I know I'm going through, putting them in specific orders. So once I break, it is as like previous customers, if they, when they come to me and I was doing it as a hobby and then they're seeing the new prices, I, like you said, I've had it, there'll be question, how, how come you've gone from that to that? And then I've explained, I've launched it as a business now. Um, there's a lot more involved, the detail. And, and once I break it down to them and they understand what's going into the highlights, they do get on board. And, and from a self-development perspective, like wh where have you seen the biggest shift in, in, your, in your thinking today? Because I know that you're not just uh, going to keep uh, sticking to what you do now and your products are just uh, 200, 300 pounds uh, per pop. But I know that you've got bigger plans and what are you looking forward to in the horizon? I mean, I know you're a guy that doesn't settle for uh, less. Uh, I know you are very ambitious and we both together have put a vision together, but maybe explain deep dive into a bit more that. Yeah, so basically this is just the start. So obviously I'm interested in sports editing, media, but this whole thing's opened a lot of doors for me. Conversations with people in very good positions, which beforehand I would never have approached, had conversations with, but now I'm com I know what I'm bringing to the table, so I'm confident speaking to them. And surprisingly, people in great condition, in p great positions, are very willing to help you if they see what you're doing, know you're enthusiastic about it, and you've got a lot of passion for it. They will go out of the way to help you. So, long term, uh, well, we've said on about we mentioned media production companies. Could I turn it into that? So it's going bigger than highlights. There's a lot of different areas. Obviously, education. I'm doing a bit of coaching um, with Big Mind Coaching. And could I link the two together with the videos? It, there's, there's, we've got a lot of different angles to approach, and it's all exciting times ahead. Cool. I think that's one of the things that we are discussing now on how to expand your business through acquisitions. I think that's one thing we started, and you already started a bit of research uh, in the UK and, and especially in the area that you're living in, in Birmingham, uh, tell me or tell everybody listening in how you're actually approaching and what's the strategy we're putting behind that. So, as you said, to strengthen my position, acquiring a business in video production is going to help me in the long run. So, we sat down, we've targeted what type of production companies would be of interest to us. So obviously like everything, you've got to do your research. So I've been spending a lot of time going through companies that would match, then you narrow it down. And then I'm just looking at adding Big Mind Sports Edit to it. And it's just going to be another part of that business, whereas the business will offer all different types of production. So that's growth wise, that's the angle I'd like to approach to make it not just about video highlights, about all of the ad adverts, um, TV, there's lot, the list is endless. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key things to note is that, especially in the UK, there are a lot of baby boomers, meaning to say that there are a lot of older people looking to retire, looking to sell the businesses. So these are highly motivated sellers that you can do a leverage buyout 
And that's something that I see as a huge opportunity. And, and that's the thing that we are doing with all uh, the students from um, Sports Business Mentorship Program. Um, we've seen it with Alex, who's um, your good mate, who's just gone on to buying a business. And we are talking about that and we're talking about many, with many other students. But uh, what's really interesting is that I want to, um, just from a, from a business perspective, what sort of, um, what, what's, your, what's your magic number to get to in, in, in the next uh, 24, 36 months in terms of revenue? 36 months, to be honest, and I, I normally do keep my goals to myself, but obviously we're speaking open there. Um, I want to get to that six-figure bracket, just a personal achievement. I'd like. I've done my research, I think only 5%. Five to ten max percent in the UK are in that bracket. So to get to that would be some achievement. Obviously, at the same time, I know it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of hard work. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. But if you want to get to something, you've got to be prepared to be able to go through all of them. Interesting you say that because what, what's your motivation behind that? Because people listening in will say that, yeah, it's, it's great that everybody wants to get to six figure. Well, we all have different reasons. You have different reasons. I have different reasons, but it'd be interesting to find out what's your motivation because uh, people listening or watching in will, will, will be looking at you and going, wow, um, his purpose is this, ours is this. So it'd be interesting to, to sort of cross-reference, but tell us what's your, what's, your, what's your motivation behind getting to six figures? Well, just a personal achievement, that's just a number to start with. That's just the number I want to get to, but it's not just about the money. I know, obviously, if you're earning that type of money, obviously, it's going to bring a lot of benefits. But at the same time, I know the more value I can keep adding in all the different sectors I'm trying to approach, it will come. And then if that does happen, then I'm going to be able to go on and affect a lot of things in a positive, positive way, whether at the moment, through highlights, obviously, I'm affecting a lot of footballers, I'm doing my coaching, affecting a lot of children. You just, the more backing you've got financially, you can go into different areas and have a big effect. And if I'm honest, that having a bigger effect on things, because if you haven't got that backing, it's easy sitting there, I'd like to do this, like to do that, but money does help at the end of it. And then it will put me in a better position for myself and my family and others and even people I don't know. Right. A lot of footballers uh, in your situation don't take the plunge. They wait till everything's over. They wait till they're you know, left with re almost really nothing. And they end up really doing uh, really nothing in, uh, significant with their lives. Um, what's your advice for them? Take action. Because if you're young, you think that day is... 10, 15 years away, trust me, it's going to come around quick. If you're older, take action before you stop because the thought that scares me and should scare a lot of footballers, if I just stopped and I didn't have the other two things working on, that I'm working on, I'd be in, I'd be, I'd be in big trouble. So that's the main thing. So you don't want to... And a lot of footballers do get caught cold and I can see why I reckon it's a big problem. Because imagine you've done something for the last 17 years, stop, you've got no money coming in. What are you going to do next? And I can see why there's a lot of trouble mentally and it leads to different things, whether it's alcohol or gambling. I can understand it because it is a scary time. So it is hard. And then the other action is, the other thing is, do you just go and do something normal and you just want to see so you finish football? can just go and get a normal job and just plod through life and that's another thing why I don't, I don't want to just be doing something for the sake of it yeah we've all got bills I'm no different to everyone else I've got a family I've got kids I've got a wife but I want to be doing something that I'm having an effect on people and that I'm like I've made it I've built it so that's my that's another drive for me and what would what would you say to um a lot of the guys that are on the fence uh, trying to find a mentor or trying to start a business or even 
not just the business, but trying to get ahead in life because a, a lot of fear stops them, like real fear. Um, a lot of them have ex excuses like, I don't have money, I don't have the time, I don't have, uh, I'm still in football. Uh, but what did, what did you do to be different from, from the rest? People will always come up with an excuse. It's the easy thing to do. Oh, I'll do it next season. Oh, I'll do that course next summer. Or oh, i got time. Or oh, I'll go on one more big holiday. There's lo you'll always find a reason. But that's my main thing was knowing. I know I've still got, a, I'm confident football-wise, I've still got a good few years in me. But I know them years are running out. And I'm like, that was the main wake-up call. So just take action don't sit back like obviously we're all members of the pfa as well they're always helping life transition after football but i would make it a part of being the pfa that you have to do something like this whatever you're interested in whether it's starting your own business whatever area you need to find someone that's been there and done it because if you do try and do it by yourself you won't you obviously you could get on something one thousand that would break through but overall you're stuck or you get to a block that you don't know how to approach it whereas if you you find someone being where you get trying to get to they can explain it saves you a lot of time and i'm at whatever i've done whether it's been football i've always looked up to my brother so i've had that now i've got you as my mentor i'm going into the business world you've been there and done it you have to learn off someone that's already gone through it it's all right getting advice from your friends, your family, it can be anyone, and they'll have the best interest at heart, their thing, but you don't know what harm they could cause you. You need to get advice off someone that's done it. Cool. Very nice. Um, last question before I let you go, right? Uh, I know you read a lot, and uh, people uh, listening in would like to know what's the favorite book, what are you reading now, and what would you highly recommend for someone who's... Um, looking to be self-aware, uh, develop personally, what would you advise them? What book to read? That's another thing. So as in reading, I give it four years ago, I didn't really read, but now I'm, any book that I get recommended by yourself or others, I'm getting it, I'm reading it. And the book at the minute I'm reading is called Never, Never Eat Alone. Okay. It's about so no, never walk alone. It's uh, never eat, eat alone. Never eat. Never eat. <laughs> <laughs> in the oh, right. yeah. I've got liverball in the brain, but I definitely said never eat. Yeah. Okay. Never eat alone. So, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm reading at the moment. Good, good stuff. So, um, last final thought. Um, what would you say to someone that, um, you know, is looking to work with me? Just do it. Obviously. Do your research if you know anyone or you know myself i can give you my honest opinion but just act like ever. at the start you're going to question it do i know it is it going to good is it going to be good am i going to achieve can i do it but until you do it you don't find out and i'm confident if you put the work in you'll see results and that's what it's about all right paul thank you i know you need to go and pick up your daughter she's waiting for you uh, thank you so much for your time and I really look forward to, to working with you and really giving you the success you deserve because you've got the mind, you've got the ideas and you've got the real drive and you can be a great example for many others uh, that will follow your footsteps and hopefully one day we can make you the, the other sports business mentor so that you can mentor a lot of them uh, in the UK. I look forward to it. All Thanks right. for having me. Thanks, mate. Speak soon. Cheers. Bye.